Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. The uh, project I'm about to show you, it, it's been going on now for about five and a half months and it's pushed me, it really has. I've had to learn uh, some new techniques, um, especially with leather. Um, you'll see that later on. As with most of the projects I do, I, I try to give them a little something that, that makes them stand out from similar things that have been made. And this project's no different. Stick around to the end and see the, uh, the little extra feature that I've added to this writing slope. If you've uh, enjoyed what you've seen, please hit the like button, it really does help, and so does the subscribe button. It really would be appreciated. I hope you enjoy. The bottom of the carcass is just a simple veneered panel, 5mm MDF as a substrate, and I use Type Bond 2 here. Spread it around evenly, and obviously you have to uh, do both sides. Otherwise the panel will warp. I find Type 1 2 works really well for panels this size. It only has to be pressed for a few hours. Um, and then when I take it out, I just stand it up for a few hours so um, air can circulate around it properly. And it's, it's fine. a fair bit why I put a finish on the inside before I glue up um, because it's just so much easier I also tape up on the inside with this uh, Tessa pink tape it doesn't leave any any residue behind when you take it off if any glue does make it onto the finished surface it, it comes off really easily I really enjoy this method also of, uh, of gluing the box up with the mitered corners laying the pieces out directly onto tape you you apply the glue and as you'll see in a second you just you just fold the box up it's it's well, I find it very satisfying <laughs> maybe it's just me <coughs> weirdo. inserting here is the top and it's a solid piece of walnut um, it needed to be as it needed to be chamfered and be the same height as the the sides of the box the panels had bowed slightly so gluing up was was quite a challenge um, but I did manage it in the end I then needed to cut the lid off and being a writing slope it had to be at a very precise angle so I had to make this jig this jig as you can see here, it allows you to cut it off at that angle. It's 10.1 degrees. With uh, plenty of, as you can see, helping hands. Um, and a spindle molder, we cut the lid off. We don't cut all the way through. Um, this makes sure that the lid doesn't drop down on the last, you know, the final cut. I then just use a Japanese saw to cut through the remainder of wood left from the spindle molder. And if it all worked out correctly, they should meet in the middle, which they did. Big relief. At this stage of the build, I actually thought that this was an actual real milestone that I'd got quite far with this build. Um, little did I know that actually the remainder of the inside was going to take a, a lot more work. Because it's a mitered box, it needs splines in there to uh, strengthen the, uh, the corners. So I made my own uh, spline material out of some layers of veneer.
project's not a project for me unless it's got dovetails in there. And uh, what better way to mark them out, eh? I love it. important part of dovetailing you're marking out if that isn't accurate nothing else matters a nice long uh, marking scalpel re really does the job here the wood I'm using is the same walnut as in the top of the carcass um, really really like working with walnut works really well by hand So the uh, grooves, rebates for the uh, the bottom and the top could have been done on the router table, but to be honest, I, I, I quite like doing it by hand. Now, um, what I'm actually making here is a compartment with some drawers in, and it's going to be to hold some pens. Um, and as I said earlier, I, I, I have this habit of over-engineering things. But essentially, I needed to make a small frame to go underneath this uh, this small compartment that would uh, hide the spring mechanisms for the f to hold and lock it in place. And then, of course, before glue up, clean up the miters. Another one of those really satisfying things. had to mark out pretty accurately um, a centre point for a, a shaft that's going to be going perpendicular through the top and the bottom surfaces it's to again to activate it you'll see that later um, but it needs to be right and here I'm just marking out where my mortises are going to be for the tenons I've already cut the top and the bottom are just again veneered panels um, but drilling through them I didn't want any breakout so just carefully go through from either side, nice and slowly, and it should be good. And it's time for everyone's favourite part, gluing up all that hard work you've done. It could uh, go wrong really quickly. So uh, best thing to do, dry fit first, and uh, don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. The internal writing slope itself is a veneered board covered in leather that is surrounded by a rebated, mitered, cornered frame. Each piece of the frame had to be uh, obviously measured, individually cut, um, with a bit left over, um, ready to take it over to the shooting board that's got a more 45 degree fence. Each piece was then individually fitted um, to make sure that it was a, a really good fit. Rebating the writing slope panels. Yep, sounds good, doesn't it?
actual idea for this drawer compartment was that it, once the writer slope was opened, that it would. Oh, that's a good sound, isn't it? Um, that would lift up once the box was open to reveal the drawers. And in an ideal world, I'd like to end up with a piston fit so when you release it, it can fall down under its own steam, controlled. To um, make the writing slope fit down within the carcass, uh, I had to make a rebate uh, on the centre divider. I regretted using the electric palm router after after I'd done it. So I need to make this lower by like one mil. This is the plan. Defense, defense. Trouble is, I'm at an angle already. It's not nice. This is better. Safer. Cleaner. So the issue I'm having is I need a very, very thin piece of a walnut. Um, and obviously you can't use the plate to get it down that thin. So I've had to um, do that. <laughs> and it works, but don't do this at home, kids. So this was where I started with the leather. Um, I really haven't had much experience with leather, so uh, please forgive my techniques. I started by laying out the top and bottom slope bodies, um, but then realized very quickly I needed to tape up because I'm messy. The leather had to actually act as the hinge for the top and the bottom slopes. Um, so I decided that it'd be best to give it a, uh, a backing to give it a bit of extra strength. Um, I then, laid it all out again and cut the leather down to the final size. I then added spray adhesive to the back of both pieces and uh, went for it. I hadn't actually put much thought into how I was going to press this, as you can see. Next it was time to actually glue it to the carcass itself. It was only actually being glued in a, the recesses, not actually to the carcass. This would allow it to uh, flex easily when, when the box was closed, I hope. In the drawer unit at the back I was making a mechanism 
uh, for a latch which will allow you to lift it up and down and latch it in place. This is the shaft that would operate the, um, the latch mechanism and this is the one that I said had to go perpendicular through the actual drawer unit itself. And here you can see it fits. Yay! Next it was a finish and then I just parted it off. Very pleased. Now I'm very new to metalwork as well, but the parts I needed for this latch mechanism, I, they couldn't be bought, so I had to I had to deal with this. I am, however, pretty pretty good at soldering and brazing. My uh, techniques need refining, I know. But essentially what I'm making here is vertical drawer runners. Um, at the bottom of the drawer, there are three rods that need to uh, latch in at the bottom and latch in at the top. This next bit is just a quick overview of me uh, putting the small drawers together. again and I'm not going to do this wood's name any justice but here we go Chicate Preto sorry if it's wrong in a project I like to have a, a tertiary colour not a lot of it but um, I'd used it for the central spindle rod and I decided that I would also use it for the handle that would be uh, viewed from the top for such a heavy dense wood it, it really turns beautifully as long as your tools are sharp, of course. With a microcrystalline wax finish, it, um, it's come up beautifully. Very pleased. Thank you so much if you've watched this far. If you've liked what you've seen, please hit that like button. And you know, it'd be nice to hit that subscribe, wouldn't it? See you next time.